to this video all about manufacturing overhead. I'm Kyle Ashcraft of Maxwell CPA Review. In this video, we're going to talk about what manufacturing overhead is and how we actually allocate it. This video is a small part of a two hour video course that I have all about cost accounting. So if you wanna learn more about it, you can check out the link below this video. And with that, let's jump in. In this video, we're going to go farther in depth on manufacturing overhead. And there are really three things that make manufacturing overhead more difficult to grasp. The first one is that we can't directly trace it to our products. For example, we can't just say that every product cost us 50 cents of electricity. And we're going to use the electricity bill as an example throughout this section. Second, we don't know how much our manufacturing overhead costs will be until the end of the period. So with electricity, we won't know how much it is until we actually get the bill at the end of the period. But we can't wait until the end of the period to start allocating costs because we need to be allocating them all throughout the period. And then the third item is that we simply don't know how many products we're going to actually make in that period. So since we don't know how much our overhead is going to cost and we don't know how many units we're going to make, we have to do something called allocate overhead, which means that we're going to take our total estimated overhead and divide it out to apply to individual units. So to allocate overhead, first we need to choose our allocation base. The two most common bases you'll see are direct labor hours or machine hours. But don't worry because the CPA problems will tell you which allocation base to use. In our example, we're going to use direct labor hours as our allocation base. So now that we have our allocation base, we need to make two estimates. One is we need to estimate what our electricity bill is going to actually cost us. And then two, we need to estimate how many direct labor hours we expect to use for the period. Let's say that last month's electricity bill was 10,000, so we estimate this month's bill to be 10,000 as well. To estimate the number of direct labor hours for the month, let's assume that we will make 500 laptops and that each laptop will require two direct labor hours. Therefore, we estimate our total direct labor hours to be 1,000. Now that we've estimated our overhead cost and total direct labor hours, we do the following calculation. We divide total estimated overhead costs over our total estimated direct labor hours, 10,000 over 1,000, $10 per hour. What does this $10 per hour mean? That for every one direct labor hour we use this month, we're going to apply $10 worth of overhead expenses. What does apply mean? Applying overhead means we're recording overhead costs to our product costs. More specifically, we're recording the overhead costs to the work in process account. If you're studying for the BEC exam and you're trying to get better at the written communication section, I have the perfect free tool for you. I created a comprehensive PDF guide that even includes an example essay. All you need to do is go to the link below that says email sign up and find out more there. So let's get back to the video. So let's say that we're at the end of the month and our manager wants to know how much we've had in manufacturing overhead. Let's say that we are planning on making 500 units, but we actually made 400 units. So we decided at the beginning that direct labor hours were going to be the allocation base and that for every one direct labor hour, we're going to allocate $10 of overhead. So let's say that we had 760 direct labor hours. So we would allocate 7,600 of manufacturing overhead, which would get recorded to the work in process account. And with overhead, it unfortunately doesn't stay quite this simple because we thought that we are going to spend 10,000 of electricity, but what happens if we actually spent 11,000 in electricity? So we think about it, we have allocated 7,600 of manufacturing overhead, but we've actually spent 11,000. So what do we do with that difference? So this means that we under applied overhead by 3,400. So what do we do with this? When it comes to under applying or over applying, we directly expense it to cost of goods sold. So we would record a debit to cost of goods sold for 3,400. So now let's take the opposite example to where instead of under applying overhead, we over apply it. So we thought we were initially going to use 1,000 direct labor hours, but let's say that we used 1,200 direct labor hours because we made more units than we thought. Therefore, we would be applying $12,000 worth of overhead, but then if it only cost 10,000, that means that we over applied by 2,000. So what do we do with that 2,000? 
we are going to record a credit to cost of goods sold for the 2000. Because once again, with under applying and over applying, we record it directly to cost of goods sold. So this gets kind of complicated, so let's summarize it. We're at the beginning of the period, and we don't know how much our overhead is going to cost, and we don't know how many units we're going to make. So what we do is we choose an allocation base, like direct labor hours, we estimate how much our total overhead is going to cost. Then we estimate how much of our total allocation base we expect to use, how many direct labor hours we expect to use. We divide our estimated overhead by the estimated number of direct labor hours. And then that is our rate that we're going to apply for overhead. So then we get to the end of the period and we actually find out how much we spent in overhead and then how many direct labor hours we used. And there are two things that could have changed throughout the period. One is our estimated overhead could be much different from our actual overhead. And then two, we could have used a lot more or less direct labor hours than we expected to. So with this, we could have either an under applied amount of overhead or we could have an over applied amount of overhead. And we record that under applied or over applied amount to cost of goods sold. And that in a nutshell is how we account for overhead costs.